And here we go. Superintendent Philip Martell joins us this morning. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Mr. Martell, good morning. Good morning, Todd. How are you? Wonderful. Wonderful. And it's good to have you with us today. Hey, I came across this study that says parents are deeply concerned about their child's academic and character development before they turn five years old. So when they enter school, uh, they have definite things that they're interested in, uh, verbal skills, uh, sharing, numbers and shapes, colors, the alphabet, some of those things that we might think, well, that's what you learn in preschool. But this is before they turn five years old. And we don't often get the chance, you and I, to talk about what River Valley does in terms of uh, really early childhood education. But it's really an important part of setting up for their school experience, isn't it? It really is. And you, and you look at a lot of the data, um, you know, that it supports it as well. That By starting earlier, putting those supports in place, um, it really does allow that, you know, that, that young adolescent to be able to just jumpstart where, where they, you know, where they are. And you can see where effective, you know, early childhood interventions and pre-K education has an impact compared to people that don't. And that's why we've made the commitment to do it. Now, some of the restrictions that really hamper us, though, I'll be quite honest with you, is the fact, you know, our county is capped at the amount of slots that are allowed to have for, like, pre-K. So while we have um, three classes right now, two of them are district-funded. We only receive grant funding for one, so it becomes a financial challenge. We shouldn't have a lid on that, like our cap on that. We should be able to get as many students as we can enrolled in this because the data supports that it gives them success, better chance of success. Yeah, and and especially socialization skills. If we learned uh, anything, and we should have learned a whole bunch of things from the pandemic, it's that uh, kids really need socialization. And with the sizes of families going down and many families having just uh, one child in them and uh, the child basically is around adults all the time, they don't have those types of skills that they might have had 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. They don't. And I will tell you, a lot of things that we do in society aren't really helping in a lot of these cases either. Um, you know, they just it's, you think about it, it's just the isolation. You're right. It becomes, becomes mental health challenges come out of that. And it's just but we have to encourage more of the socialization and get back to really some of the old roots that a lot of these things were built on. Now you get you know, they're, they're caught up with all the, 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 the cell phones, the video games, the things we know that are just, just, they're distractions. But they allow and they almost like enable the anti-socialization because it's 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 really simple it's in you know even the social media which we know we have i always there's a world of keyboard cowards out there but they don't want to interact with people Mm -hmm. um it's just it's it's a sad state where we're at as a country yeah does it add extra pressure on teachers or maybe pressure isn't oh my god Uh, It, it it's incredible the pressure we just were having conversations this morning because what I'm really scared of, too, now is the fact that we know we have a lack of people that are educators. Okay, so we're trying to rush people through the system. You hear from the, you know, we're going to pay student teachers, we're going to do all this. But I'm concerned that teachers don't, they're not, these young students that come through may not have the classroom management skills to be able to handle the challenges we just discussed here. It's a real big concern of mine because we're, you know, but it's been, that's why we have in our rising educator program. So we have only 20 of our own students getting our high school students, getting them in and getting them experience now working with our best teachers because I'm hoping that will help them because that's not helping if you're rushing them through a collegiate system just to get them, you know, because we, we have a workforce issue. Yeah, well, that's one of the interesting things uh, over the past couple of years that we've noted with your school district uh, especially is the idea that uh, there is a need for this or for that skill to be developed. Uh, and so rather than wait for somebody else to do it, you get – early programs that, that, that enable students who have that sort of an interest to get involved in and, and get a head start on getting all of that stuff done. You, you have to. And that's the thing. We're not waiting. As you know, with me now, we wait, we put things in motion. Even a lot of the early, you know, the, the training of educators now, the rising educators, districts need to do that themselves. I've had conversations. They need to not send them to the career centers and that. Utilize your best teachers. Who do you have? You have the best available resource in some of your finest teachers in your district. Those are the ones that we want working with our, you know, with our rising educators, potential educators. Are there measurables uh, that uh, enable you to see how programs are working uh, from early education to the kindergarten and grade school years and then onward into high school? Are there things that you can measure and look at to see the difference between having socialization skills and not? 
I, de- I definitely think so. There's data, and that's we have. I have somebody that just does nothing strictly but feeds data, and that drives our decisions what we do. And we do have to put more measurables in place. There's no question about it. And that's why with our use of the RISAC and talking about each student's you know, strengths, interests, and values, and at, at starting in kindergarten, having those conversations, it enables them that they do have that conversation. So by the time they come to middle or high school, it's not like, well, what do you want to do? They know what they want to do. They know the path, where, what their own individual strengths, interests, and values are. And that is something we have to start early with our students, and we do. And you can walk into our – you can walk into an elementary classroom in any in either Blairs or Salzburg, and our students will tell you their top three codes, what their strengths, interests, and values are. Because they're always kindergarten, and you'll be you'll it's just amazing. But our teachers have bought in to do that. They work with them, um, you know, with the use of the RISAC tool. It's just a very important part of what we do here. Yeah, well, I, I'm glad we had that part of our conversation. Let's move on and uh, get to that secondary level. Uh, this morning and talk about uh, the fact that uh, we're in the month of April right now. There's not all that much school year left, is there? There's not a lot of school year left. Um, you know, it's just, just getting through now, obviously, with the bad weather we've had over the last couple of days. You know, it's been a challenge, obviously, for all of our communities. Um, you know, the, the whole, you know, work up over the solar eclipse, um, you name it, right? <laughs> Are you doing things special for the eclipse coming up on Monday? We're having a flexible instruction day, um, you know, so that'll be something where the, our students will be a remote day. Um, we had, a, you know, we had time left, so that was something our board thought we should do because it really, to do a half-day release is would have been, you know, like the old, but it, it throws, uh, with the lack of bus drivers, it becomes more of a hassle to do a half, believe it or not, an early release, and it is a full flexible day. Yeah, yeah. I imagine the science teachers are loving this, though, right? They are loving it. They are loving it. Actually, we have some of our welding students that want to come in and they want to use the welding mask just to look at the thing. So it would be, they, they're getting creative. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> sort of makes you want to go buy one of your own, doesn't it? Yeah. I just like, the teacher came to me yesterday. I'm like, yeah, it's great. Actually, I said, just make, just get some pictures, get it out on social media. It's a pretty interesting idea. So. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right. So as we get into the month of April, there are certain things we look forward to. I've talked with other school district representatives as well about standardized tests, and you have to get prepared for those. Uh, The other day we had Rob Heinrich on. We were talking about the value of uh, standardized tests and how school districts now, uh, you know, it used to be you'd hear complaints all the time about, oh, we have to take these standardized tests. But now, it's to the point where the, most people realize they have to happen, so let's just take advantage of them and, and let's use them properly. Uh, and, and I'm sure that's the way that you look at it, too. It's something we got to do. I do not believe they really show a true barometer. You and I had that conversation or root capacity of a student. So I'm not an advocate for them, I think, but we're forced to do them. Um, but, we, you know, we do too much of it. And, you know, we need to look more competency-based education and really – find out what a student's capable of, what they truly know. Um, I don't think we get that from these, but we're forced to do it, funding attached to it, but there needs to be a better way down the line to do it. Yeah, uh, and uh, and certainly uh, school districts are learning to deal with it, uh, uh, but it does take a chunk out of a, of, of a school year, and, and it makes it difficult for teachers to really plan and map out how they would like the course of their year to go along. No question about it. And that's the thing. I look at it as we're forced to do these things. We're forced to do too much of it, and it takes away from the true instruction of a student. And that's the sad thing because you're right. The teachers have to take so much time for that instead of giving pure instruction for students. Um, that That's the sad part of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's head down the road to the STEAM Academy, find out what's going on there. What's up there? Just getting uh, students registered. Now, you know, we're up to almost 35% of our own students. Um, you know, grades 10 through 12, maybe even closer to 40% that'll be in the STEAM Academy next year. You know, we're kind of coming into year three of it. So we're seeing like all those courses that we started in sixth grade, feeder courses and different things. Now you're going to start to see the true rewards of that because of getting those students engaged earlier to find out what they want to do. Um, you know, but it's, everything's moving along. Our automation engineering program is ready to go. Um, we're st- we have a meeting next Friday with American Airlines because we're going to get our aviation uh, component of it off as well with a pilot program, literally no pun intended for next year, <laughs> um, you know, with, uh, you know, and focusing heavily on trying to get a lot of females involved with that and start with a program called Fe- uh, Girls Who Can Fly. So we're excited. I mean, it's, and we're working with the county as well. Indiana County has been very supportive, the commissioners and, and Byron Stauffer, um, and Jim, you know, with the folks over at Jimmy Stewart Airport to be able to help engage us with that as well. Seeing how many students are involved in the STEAM Academy who also are involved in the high school, 
um, it, it has to be pretty gratifying uh, and, and really give you an idea that the, there's a great potential uh, for the mix of those two, of the high school level courses. Uh, and even if you're just taking one or two courses at STEAM or you're really committing to uh, the whole STEAM program, uh, it, it seems as if that's a, a really good possibility uh, and it has great potential. It, it, it does. And we're even, we were just having a conversation. We have ninth graders that we're going to have go down one or two days for exploratory purposes. They want challenged. And I said, we need to be able to accommodate every student's schedule, you know, to have flexibility to enable them to determine their career path, no matter what it is. And it, and it really truly is done on a case by case basis. And I tell you, my administrative team just does an incredible job doing that because they truly treat that. They know that one shoe doesn't fit everyone. So we try to work with each student and they have their own individual educational plan is what it is. Well, the, the really exciting part about it is to see where it could possibly go in the future because you keep adding programs, but you have to uh, as well evaluate the programs that you have in place. And that, that structure is there for you now. And, ch- and to change and evaluate and challenge each year based on the changes in the actual professions, credentials. If we're not evolving each year, we're doing a disservice to our students. And that's, that's the unfortunate side of what's happened with CT education because there are a lot of things out of their own hands without funding and different things. We have to change based on what the, what the workforce demands are and what the changes are in the actual profession, technology-wise, instructional-wise. If we're not doing that, then we're doing something wrong. He is Philip Martell. He's the superintendent of the River Valley School District. We've gone all over the district here. We started with the preschool and, and went all the way up through elementary and high school and over to the STEAM Academy, too. So we've we basically followed the, the, the real progression there, haven't we? We have, and uh, you found some things near and dear to my heart today. Not that they aren't all, but we can see how passionate I get about some some things. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, have a wonderful day. We'll catch up with you again. Good, my friend. I'll talk to you soon. All right. There's Philip Martell, River Valley School District. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM.